It's a find that will enter the history books. Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 incredible finds on Time Team. This site has produced one of the biggest range of finds we've ever seen on Time Team. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're looking at the most astonishing things unearthed on Time Team. Let us know if Time Team has ever come to your town in the comments. Number 10. Henry V's Gold Coin The team was in Codner Castle in the Midlands this time, seeking to understand exactly what the castle looked like before it was ruined. It's not even clear when the castle was built, since so little of it remains, and every discovery they make conflicts with another. This stuff comes from Stamford, down in Lincolnshire. Uh -huh. They stopped making it about 1150. You're kidding. No, really. But that's ages before the first record of there being a castle here, yeah. isn't it? Eventually, though, while digging out the castle moat, one of the team pulls out a very well-preserved, solid gold coin. My hand's shaking. Why is your hand Holy shaking? Gold coin. Gold <laughs> hammered coin. Look at that hand. Come here, look at, look at that. <laughs> this isn't an everyday discovery, even for professional archaeologists. Especially not a gold coin in such a good condition that is hundreds of years old. Well, uh, it's a gold noble, which is a, the big gold coin of the, of the period. These are really high status things. The coin commemorates the British Navy in King Henry V, who lived in the 14th and 15th centuries. Number 9. The Missing Roman Town Do you reckon if we got this roadside mausoleum job, is this going to be a cremation? Well, to have a complete vessel placed upside down in this kind of position, the most obvious thing is that you would have a cremation burial in it. Time Team journeyed north to County Durham to explore the town that surrounded a famous Roman fort, Venovia. However, as Tony Robinson explains, the fort's been studied extensively, but the surrounding town hasn't. In fact, it's not even clear where the town was. Well, I can tell from the, the size of the coin straight away that it's 1st or 2nd century. At first, it looked like they were digging in all the wrong places, and that Victorian archaeologists might have nicked everything from the site, but eventually they find three mausoleums, a landmark discovery for Roman Britain. There's the main mausoleum wall, here's the second wall cutting across here, turning through a right angle. And then they dig up evidence of a much earlier Roman fort made of wood, a fort many didn't even know existed. It supposedly dates back to the very first Roman attempts to expand into the north. Number 8. Lost Medieval Church How long was it after that that you realised that there wasn't just one body but a whole load? Straight away. Within, within 10 minutes. In Northamptonshire, Time Team was enlisted to solve a rather macabre mystery. A man renovating his country house came across nearly a dozen dead bodies while digging the foundations, and the team wanted to find out why they were there. Mick's initial assumption was that the house was built on a medieval cemetery nobody knew about. The burial register doesn't seem to have survived. That would be from the dissolution onwards, about 1538 onwards. So we don't know who was buried in this church after that. As well as that, there was one a church in the area, but nobody knew where it was, and there was no surviving record of the burials at first. Eventually, they were able to find some record of who the deceased might be, and they even speculate that the bodies might have been plague victims. John Lane, Richard Chapman, Roger Merrick, so these people could actually be buried out here. Almost certainly they are the people buried in the graveyard. Number 7. The Real Templars The house has been repeatedly modernised since the 1600s. Beric's job is to discover if there's anything Templar hidden inside or below the present building. This classic episode is from back in the 1990s, as the team went to Templecombe to look at where the local faction of Templars were living at the time. This medieval manor was once owned by the Templars, and though it's been renovated many times, they want to get to the truth about when it was built and how often it's been updated. What sort of period would they be? Well, well these are going to be sort of 13th century yeah. things, aren't they? I mean this was the heart of an important Templar building, that would keep records of the Knights' organisation, though we eventually found out that the Templars were eventually pushed out of the building by the Hospitallers. 
Some parts of the building are 800 years old. What date do you think this building is? Because the Ordnance Survey record said it was about 1200. 13th century is fine. Is um, it really? Yeah. Number six, the Chapel of St. Columba. So tomorrow we're going to dig one of the most enigmatic and rare pieces of early Christian archaeology that we've ever excavated. This site on the Isle of Mull in the Inner Hebrides was found by two amateur archaeologists. It was an extremely old human settlement in Scotland. It took them a while to work out what the site even was, though, as evidence points to both a medieval house or a chapel from the early days of Christianity. And you can see here, look at the way these stones are all in a line, stacked up. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That is probably where Gosh, oh, yeah, the cross would have stood. Yeah. Eventually, they landed on the theory that the chapel might actually contain the remains of a local saint. They soon did find crucial remains that were able to be carbon dated to the 7th century, and they found the proof that they needed that the building was one of the earliest Christian churches in Scotland. Hidden in plain sight amongst the hundreds of stones we've been examining for three days is a part of the original Celtic cross that would have stood proud outside the eastern end of this chapel. Number 5. King Alfred's Bunker The first ever episode went to find a key site in the history of King Alfred the Great, one of the most revered kings to ever live in Britain. I think we've, we've got two jobs to do, haven't we, really? We've got to see whether we can find where the fort was. Yes. Um, and. And then the other one is to see if we can find where the abbey was. This was in Athelney, Somerset, long said to be where Alfred hid until he could eventually defeat the formidable Viking force of the great heathen army. Victor is drawing the landscape as it would have looked in Alfred's day. Eventually, they were able to find where they thought the abbey's remains were, though sadly, they were a bit restricted on where they could dig their trenches, because the site was that historically important. They did discover that the site was actually much bigger than previously believed, giving us even more information about this famous king. So Athelney yeah. Abbey actually started... Well, they've actually got the money. Just place. about... Yeah. ...about here. Number 4. Mosaics no Roman ruin is complete without an elaborate mosaic. This site had them in droves. The mosaics we're uncovering tell us there was a really grand building here in the 4th century. After digging a test pit, they quickly found an extensive mosaic, not to mention plenty of Roman coins dating to the 1st century. The site was previously a grand Roman villa, down in temperate Somerset, and they found that it's actually on the larger side. Amazing day. Not every day you get something like this, and I think in most archaeologists' career this is a, a red letter day. Restoring the mosaics was a real joy though, as the flooring was slowly unearthed. It's astonishing how vibrant it still looks after more than a thousand years underground, as well as showing just how rich the family who built the villa in the 4th century really were. Here we go. Ah, oh, oh, there it is. Yeah, there's the turn. There's the turn. Number three. Manx Chapel. Andy, look at these voids here. Look, this is absolutely diddle with them. Another chapel. This time they headed to the Isle of Man in search of one of the few keels that has never been excavated. The problem being that it's right in the middle of a golf course. They have some Manx experts on to ensure that the site is treated with the respect it deserves, explaining that this one may have been occupied since even before the 8th century. I've um, never ever seen a grave with no dirt in it. I know, yeah. it's really, really spooky, isn't it? it? Is. The highlight of the excavation came early, though, when they unearthed a centuries-old grave encased in stone, miraculously preserving the skeleton within. It even had hair and was about a thousand years old. They also found a stone with 11th century Gaelic script writing about a band of warriors. And, and the idea that this records you know, 50 warriors, potentially, that, that came here in the 11th century, which mm. I mean, was a small community, I mean, that mm. would have had a mm. serious yeah. impact. Mm. Number two, the Neolithic mystery. We're tying up an awful lot of our resources 
on the Bronze Age, aren't we? Are we going to lose sight of the Roman? Time for another archaeological puzzle. Ruins were found underneath a field, as well as a handful of Roman relics, but they also found a lot of medieval stuff, and then, eventually, much older Bronze and Stone Age pieces. Do you find many monuments like this around here? Not around here, no. No, so this is actually quite rare. It fills in a nice gap. They astonishingly determined that this was actually a Neolithic site dating back about 5,000 years, and that the later Roman coins came from Romans travelling to the monument to present it with offerings. And the only reason you're getting Bronze Age activity on, on our site is because they're continuing the, the older tradition. It could have even been a burial site where bodies were taken and left exposed to the open air to decompose. The enclosure may have been used to display dead bodies. And to think, if the farmer's ploughs hadn't kept breaking, it would never have been found. Number one, the Spitfire. We know where his plane went down in northern France, but we don't exactly know how or why it crashed. These fighter planes are some of, if not the most, recognisable aircrafts in Britain, thanks to their crucial role defending the country in the Second World War. There's a clear concentration. So what would you reckon? So you could actually home in on probably something well, eight by eight. Time Team headed to France in this memorable episode to unearth a very early Spitfire that crashed over the country in 1940. Though you may think that finding one plane in a huge area of France is like looking for a needle in a haystack, modern technology meant that they found the wreckage fairly quickly. The plane appears to have nosedived into the ground, just as the eyewitnesses said. Investigation revealed that the Spitfire was shot down by a Messerschmitt, Germany's main fighter plane, and they even identified which pilot was responsible, Gunther Specht. And when we unravelled it, this is what we found. Virtually an entire Spitfire, including the propeller, the engine, the control panel. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo UK and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.